Hello, everybody. Pastor Rob here from Community Baptist Church. This is our daily Bible reading, and thank you for logging on. Well, so today we begin a new week, and these next couple weeks is a special series at our church called This is Love. And it really is a chance for us to now come together for this coming Sunday, Palm Sunday, and then the next week, which is traditionally called Holy Week, Good Friday, and then Easter celebration. And I hope you'll be part of each of those offerings and gatherings. Uh, it'll be so good to gather both for uh, well, Palm Sunday outdoors, and then uh, Easter Sunday, two, service of, two services on the North Lawn uh, at 9 o'clock and 10.30, as well as our online versions. But I want to say that the events around Palm Sunday all the way to Easter are not random things that happened, but very clear prophecy given centuries earlier that was actually being fulfilled. Now, to the people that day, it looked very random and chaotic. But, of course, our Savior knew and when we, uh, on this side of history, get to look back in the scriptures, we see the prophecy. So on this Monday of this week leading into this news series, I want to take us back to an Old Testament prophecy. It's Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 to 13. Listen to the reading of God's word from Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take the chariots of Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem and the battle bow will be broken. I will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of my blood, the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. I will bend Judah as I bend a bow and fill it with Ephraim. I will rouse your son Zion and against your son's Greece and make you like a warrior's sword. Amen. Well, again, if this is a new for you to just be aware of, uh, there are 39 books in the Old Testament. And you can literally read from the beginning of Genesis all the way through and find prophecy after prophecy. Some have estimated over 300 references to the coming of the Savior and his life, his, his, his death, what we call the atonement, and then eventually his coming again. And so Zechariah is one of these prophets that maybe you've never really read. It's easy to get lost. It's called a minor prophet because it's small. But, but notice um, when we think about th this prophecy, from Zechariah, it's actually painting a picture of Palm Sunday, which again, we'll celebrate this coming Sunday. And I'll talk more about Palm Sunday later in the week in particular, but notice how this prophecy, again, written centuries before, two important things. It says how, how there'll be this king riding on a donkey, uh, righteous and victorious, but coming in lowly riding on a donkey. So we often, of course, speak of Jesus the king, this type, this side of history, we, we really know that. And, and yet here the prophet was saying centuries before, he'll actually enter the city on a donkey. Now, why is that important? Well, in the ancient world, a king would usually ride on a horse if he was coming into battle. If he wanted to be up higher, show strength, there's gonna be a huge battle, big war. But two times a king would ride a donkey. It was a sign of peace. like. We're just kind of going chill right now because why? There's peace in the land. So even there, there's this, this beautiful picture that Jesus we worship came, and to, to use that phrase, as the king of peace, the prince of peace, as it sometimes is referred to in scripture. And, and so um, he says in Zechariah verse 10, he will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea, but it's not a rule he has to go to war and and battle with, with with armory and blood and swords, but it's a it's a it's a war that he conquered by himself, because we know where the rest of the story will go in terms of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. But he comes as the peace one, the peacemaker, if you will. So um, in scripture, the word we often see for peace is shalom, which uh, if you're not aware means more than simply the absence of conflict, but it's the presence of Yahweh, the presence of God where things are harmonious, things are right. So again, centuries earlier, this king will ride on a donkey because he will bring peace to the land. He'll bring shalom to the land. He'll bring things that are right. Fast forward to Jesus teaching what we call the Sermon on the Mount. And you remember that phrase when he, he says, blessed are the peacemakers. 
And then throughout the scriptures, Jesus and the Apostle Paul and other writers talking to us about being people of peace. So as we um, walk through today and this week, I wonder what kind of opportunities God would give us to be people of peace. Who could make peace? Uh, maybe even willing to engage in conversation with somebody. Maybe willing to help someone uh, when there's even some confusion. Maybe how we pray that there'd be peace in the land. There'd be peace between people. There'd be peace in our hearts as we help people uh, come to him so they can be right with God. They can have peace with God. So um, as we walk into this new series, we think about God's love and action. Uh, first and foremost, think about our Savior came in humility because he brought peace. And he's calling us to be those kind of people. So here's a prayer I've been praying a lot, praying to be able to share God's love with one person every day. So even, uh, again, thinking about this call to be to follow in the way of Jesus as a peacemaker. I wonder if there's just somebody today God's going to put in your path and you'll be able to share God's love, share some of that peace uh, with him or her today. Let's pray. Our Lord Jesus, we thank you that as we approach this very holy time of the year, the, the, the foundation of our faith, of what you did on the cross and the empty tomb, that you, you came as the Prince of Peace. You came to, to break the powers that have held people back to, to be able to put our hearts at rest and hearts at peace because of your sacrifice and your love at work. So thank you, Lord. We commit this week to you and this new day and ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, friends, so much. Look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.